Hello. All right, guys. First week of February. First day of February. What better time to talk about budgeting than relatively the new year? So let me let me share this real quick. wanted to come in here it well, not in here you're on my page I wanted to show y'all real quick just the basics of how we set up our budget because we did do a post yesterday mm, day before yesterday I think it was yesterday literally just talking about how we sat down we crafted up a budget for 2021 and we have a certain amount that we are gonna have in our bank accounts by the end of the year Lord willing obviously um, but in order to get there we had to have a plan and that's something that I'll be real honest, this video is going to be talking about budgeting more from a place of want versus need. Meaning we already did the whole get out of debt thing. We paid off debt several years ago. Like we did the budgeting because we didn't have any money and there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody, I feel like everybody is there at one point. This is more budgeting because... <sighs> I'm just gonna be real frank. We got our, I got my 1099 and my husband got his W-2. And we're like, oh, we made like a, sig a pretty good amount more in 2020 than we did in 2019. He has a job where his income is usually pretty fixed. Mine, because I work online and I have so many different streams coming in, mine just gradually goes up, which is awesome. But then we're like, but where did all that money go? Because we look at our bank account versus what we brought in and we're like, we weren't very good stewards with this money. Drop me a one if you've ever been there. I hope I'm not the only one where you look at your account either at the end of the month, the end of the week, the end of the year, whatever, and you see some of the transactions and you're like, yeah, I wasn't super smart this month. I'm hoping I'm not the only one. So that's what I wanted to just come on. I had a lot of people ask me, okay, how do you even set up a budget? Because I don't even know how to do this. Well, that reminds me, let me switch my screen so y'all can read things. Money goes fast. Money does go fast. Money is one of those things where if you're not constantly being very diligent about it, it's just gone. Okay. I'm a teacher. What's your superpower? Y'all, I bought this before we set up a budget so nobody be coming at me. Um, I did not need this. I wanted it. I bought this um, like two months before Christmas. I saw it on Amazon. So I'll link it after this video. If anybody wants it, you can go buy it. But anyways, squirrel guys. Okay. If this is the first time I have a lot, I see a lot of new people on here. Hi, Cassandra. Mm, is it Junelli? Janelli? I don't know. It's a really cool name, but I'm probably butchering it. Hey, Martha. Hey, Nora. So if you're watching this and you've not ever been on my page before, or if you're watching it, on YouTube or Instagram and you've never been on my platform, I guess, or my channel. My name is Tanya Johnson. Um, I am a teacher by trade. However, I now work 100% on social media. I really just kind of tapped into the whole monetizing your Facebook and Instagram thing. And so I am still a teacher, but I, now I homeschool my daughter. So I'm a teacher in that respect. Um, I teach people how to make money online. I teach people how to homeschool, like I've turned into kind of a homeschool coach, so I work with a lot of parents on how to homeschool their kids, and I love it. It's something that I enjoy doing, and I'm going to be talking a lot more about budgeting this year. Don't freak out if you're new to my page, like if you're not all about budgeting, I'm not turning into a budgeting page, I promise, but it is something that just because it's going to be a real, uh, I guess, heavy part of our life, we'll be talking about it a little bit, so I do want to show y'all how to set up a budget and then you can kind of work from there. So all you need to do to set up a budget is get a piece of paper. If you're watching this, you're probably by yourself. It's what, four o'clock in the afternoon. You're probably not with your spouse. If you have a spouse or significant other and they live with you and you share bills, I would recommend doing this with them. This is something that my husband and I do every year when we do our budget, we do it together um, because there's going to be things that you don't remember that they do and vice versa. So get a piece of paper, you're gonna write needs, wants, and then at the bottom I write yearly because there are a few things that we go in there that are yearly, they're not um, they're not monthly. So 
these are your, what you're going to do is I come from a place of realness when it comes with money. It doesn't matter what your budget is if you're not living your budget. So what I personally do is to start any budget, I write down what am I actually spending right now on different things. So I have the one we did here. So I'm going to like read it off to you guys. Or no, I'm, sorry, I'm not going to read it off to you, but I'm going to kind of give you an example. So for example, one thing that we do is we have Netflix. Netflix is nine bucks a month. That would go in the want category. It comes out every single month. So what we're writing on this paper are things that come out monthly. So every month around the same amount of money, but you're going to split it up. Is this a want or is this a need? Now you may find that some of your needs, you could fine tooth and save a little money if you wanted to. Um, and you may find that some of the things that you think are needs, your spouse is like, yeah, that's not a need. For me, getting my hair and nails done is a need, but it's really not a need. Like if we were in a lot of debt and we were trying to like get serious about paying off debt, I could sacrifice my hair and my nail budget. I don't want to, but I could. Um, so there's going to be things like that. But so drop me down. What are some wants and what are some needs? I want to make sure you guys are understanding this as we're going along. So something that you spend money on every single month, that's a need. Drop me down a few things in the comments. And then something you spend money on every single month, that's a want. Drop me down in the comments. So mortgage, for example, mm, that's a need. You kind of need to live in your house. That would go under the need category. Life insurance. Just a shameless plug, if you don't have life insurance, please get life insurance. Um, we don't sell it. Like, I don't even know where to tell you where to get it. We've had ours for since before my daughter was even born. But we've had close friends and family members that pass unexpectedly without life insurance. And we see firsthand what happens to their family when they don't have any money because they weren't expecting their only income in the house to die. Or their only... You know, they weren't expecting their spouse to die and they were living okay, but paycheck to paycheck and now they don't have money for their bills and for a funeral. So please get life insurance. I don't care how much money you don't have, make room for life insurance. Cable TV, that is not, not necessarily a need, but that's something that most of us spend money on. So I think you kind of get my drift. You're just gonna write down exactly what you actually spend every single month and what you spend it on. So when you're done, you should have a list of wants and needs. And then yearly for us, like for example, because we do homeschool, our homeschool budget is broken down yearly, um, not necessarily monthly. So we budget $2,000 a year for homeschool. About 1100 of that is curriculum. And then the other 900 is like field trips and art stuff and just fun things. Okay. So you, again, if you're watching this and you're like new to homeschooling or you're thinking about homeschooling, you're like, dang, I don't have $2,000. I guess I can't homeschool. Not what I'm saying. You can do it for much cheaper. I'm telling you that's our budget. So the other yearly one that we budget, we only have two. Oh, it's my husband's hair. Y'all, let me tell you, he gets a haircut about three times a year. It's typically about $50 because we both do believe in tipping very well when it comes to eating out, nail and hair services and massages, whatever. Like we just are good tippers. Um, so that includes tip. I know he get it cheaper. I know someone in the comments is like, oh my gosh, he's wasting so much money. He chooses to pay that much on his hair. Um, he budgets $150 a year for his hair. Y'all, I budget $100 a month for my hair and nails, but 90% of that is hair. So we kind of laughed when he was like, really? I was like, honey, it's expensive. Like when your hair is this long and this thick, like, and that budget includes like I take a supplement that makes my hair grow and it makes it thick and healthy. It's important to me, so I don't mind buying it. It's like, a, basically it's like a buck a day. So it really isn't that big of the budget, but I do budget it. Um, I use certain products on my hair that are a little bit more expensive than others. I get it cut and colored every eight to, mm, eight to 10 weeks, which I still have some blonde peeking through from the last time that not all of the color stuck because my hair was so blonde. Um, so anyways, that, like, that includes everything, but that is my hair budget. My daughter is, well, she was playing outside, so I'm like, there's green snow out there that I'm looking at. So that's your first step is just writing everything down. Second step is you deciding, what is your goal for 2020? Is your goal to have a certain amount in the bank? Like, is your goal savings? And again, like I said, we're coming at it from a place of it's fun to spend money, but we also need to be adults and realize it's fun to like have a big bank account to where if anything happens, 
Like we, we don't have that extra stress. Or are you coming from a, a place of, I need to pay off a certain amount of debt this year. So all I want you to do is flip over and I want you to write down how much money you want in the bank at the end of the year. So I'm not gonna write our number, but I'm gonna write a number just to kind of, actually I'm gonna write someone's number who I just worked with on budgeting and we talked a little bit about it and she actually is one of the people that asked me to do a video to break down. And I won't give any other information. There's no way you're going to guess who she is. Most of you probably don't even know her. But their goal at the end of the year is to have $25,000 in the bank. I think that's an excellent goal to be starting out with um, for their situation. Again, everyone's situation is different. Your goal might be not to have twenty five dollars in the bank, but to pay off $25,000. Then I want you to write in what do you estimate you're going to bring in for 2021. Now, if you're on pretty much fixed income, and I don't mean fixed income like you're retired, obviously that would be fixed income, but fixed income, like your job doesn't fluctuate that much. You know roughly how much you bring in per year. So I'm just gonna use their numbers, okay? So they bring in 80,000 a year. 2,500 is what they want to save. And so what they're gonna do is they're going to figure up, so they're going to go through and they're going to figure up, okay, how much do I actually spend on bills? So if they average or they add all of that up every single month, what do they actually spend? Now, most of y'all, you spend more than your budget. But I'm saying like, for example, and just to give you another tip too, groceries. Groceries is a need. However, you can get by a little bit cheaper if you are willing to sacrifice a little bit more time. Just to elaborate on that, I get groceries delivered once or twice a week, okay? I don't have to get groceries delivered. If I wanted to sacrifice time, I could save a little bit of money. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be honest with you. I value my time way over my money. But if we were really in debt or really struggling and didn't have enough income coming in, that is one thing I could absolutely cut. Another tip some of you don't know how much you spend on groceries. You have no idea. When I say groceries, you're like, uh, you're not going to have a number there. You're literally, the next four weeks, your job is to track how much do you actually spend on groceries. And then you'll plug that number in. Um, you have to start somewhere, and that somewhere is knowing your numbers. So if they've got all this stuff written down, they're going to go through, and they're going to add it all up. And we're just going to... Play devil's advocate here. I have no idea how much their budget is. Um, we're just going to play devil's advocate here. We're going to say that they spend $4,800 a month is what they have written down of their budget. Okay, so if you spend $4,800 a month, oh, and by the way, this number needs to bring your take-home pay, not your tax, not before taxes. So it needs to be after taxes. What do you actually bring home every year? Because the taxes, you're probably not, you're not writing those down. Those come out automatically. You don't, you don't need to worry about those. But you need this number to be before taxes or after taxes, sorry. Because this number is going to be after taxes. So you're not saying I want $25,000 between my bank account and what I paid for taxes. You're saying I want this in my bank. After bills, like I want this much extra at the end of the year. So this needs to be, what are you actually bringing home? What do you see every year that goes through your hands before it goes to bills? Like for example, I don't have health insurance written down because my husband's job takes it out automatically. So it's not a bill we need to worry about. It's not a bill we really budget in because we know how much he brings home after the health insurance and taxes are already taken out. So just a tip there. Um, so $4,800 is what they spend monthly. So you take that and times it by 12, 57,600 is their number. So every year they spend $57,600. So remember, they want 25 grand in the bank. So if they take $80,000, which is what they bring home, they minus the 57, I don't even know what I said. Hold on. Let me do this again. I'm going to write this down. Okay. They take the $80,000, that's what they bring home. That's what every year they, or 2021, that's what they plan on bringing into their house. 
And then they minus the $57,600 that they know that they are already budgeting to spend on bills. It leaves them $22,400. So close, but that's not $25,000. So they would have to ask themselves, okay, am I okay with only $22,000 instead of $25,000? And guys, there's not a right or wrong answer. They may say, okay, all the stuff on my list I want to keep. So we're just going to have a little less at the end of the year. That's fine. Um, or they've got one of two options. They can bring choose to bring in more income. Y'all, we live in 2021. I'm living proof. Anyone can choose to bring in more income. We literally doubled our income, our household income, just by me switching from the job I had to working online. And some of y'all, I know you, you have doubled and tripled your income by doing the same thing I'm doing and just doing it a little bit more. So I know it's worth it. Or I know it's not worth it. It is worth it. But I know it is doable for anybody. But some people don't want to do that. And that's okay. Again, the way that each of us live individually is not for everybody. But your option is bring in more income or cut down on some of your bills. So that's where you look at the needs category. And there are certain things like groceries. Okay, you may decide I can cut back a little bit on groceries every month. Um, I think, I'm just looking at ours. I think that's probably the only need category that I we could cut back on. Because we do order things that are a little bit more convenient that cost a little more money. Then you look at your want side. So I'm just going to get, I'm going to use them as an example. If their goal is to find $3,000 more in their budget, eh, just kidding, we'll do exact. $2,600 is what they need over the course of 12 months. So that's the number that's different between what they want in their bank and what they're going to have in their bank if they follow the budget they wrote down. Divide that by 12 because there's 12 months in the year. They need to find, meaning they need to cut out $216.66 from their budget. So you see how you're kind of working backwards? You start from where you are, so you're writing down everything that you, you actually spend. Then you look ahead and say, where do I want to be? And then you make sure the numbers match, because if they don't match, then you have to either find more money, make more money, find more money, meaning trim the budget, make more money, meaning you might get another job, you might do like I do and work online part-time, you might do like I do and work online full-time, which is what I do now, um, or just be okay with your end of the year number being adjusted a little bit. And again, there's not a right or a wrong, it's what do you want for your family. So then if you're, if you're deciding, okay, I'm gonna trim from the budget, then you look at the wants category and you say, what can I cut out or what can I get rid of all together? Or like, what can I trim down or what can I get rid of? So my husband just got home. Let me text him that I'm doing a video because he's gonna walk in and be like, oh, <laughs> that's not cute. I text him, he may not get it. He may walk in and still be like, hi guys. So just a warning. Um, so some things, and I'll, I'm gonna read from our budget that we wrote down. Some wants, so some things that we spend money on every month, but we could cut out if we needed to. Netflix, cable TV, which we don't, I guess technically have cable, we have what's called sling, which is basically cable. Um, we could cut back on groceries. That's not a one, but we could cut back on that. Let's see. Oh yeah, I pay someone to clean our house. I could cut that all together and do it myself if I needed to. Again, I'm not going to, but if I was in the position, you know, that I needed the money at the end of the year, I would cut that out. I could. Um, my husband pays like $18 a month for some sports channel. <laughs> we could cut that out. Um, again, my hair and nail budget could be trimmed. I don't have to get my hair colored. I do because I want to. I don't have to get my nails done. Um, I don't have to get pedicures. Like all of that are wants. And it's again, it's stuff that I like, but it's not a necessity. Um, I pray for Amazon Prime. For me, I would say that's probably more of a necessity because I do it as a way to get prizes to my team quickly and the least cost Cost of, or the most cost efficient. So I probably wouldn't cut back on that. I spend $20 a month on books. I'm a huge, huge, huge advocate that you should be reading. 
like daily self-help and just in general working on whatever your craft is. So I read a lot about, I'm going to read a lot about personal finance. I read a lot about leadership. I read a lot about homeschooling. I read a lot about parenting in general because I want to be the best parent possible um, and just general self-help. So again, but again, I could, could cut that back and go to my library if I wanted to. I just, I like to mark my books up and I write all over them. So libraries typically don't like that. We do parties once a, once a month at the house, like homeschool parties. So I have a budget for that. I could cut that out or I could get real creative and get real cheap on that. We entertain. So again, we invite people over, we take people out, we pay for this stuff. We could cut back on that. Um, Ipsy, which is like a makeup. Most of y'all probably have heard of Ipsy. It's like they send you makeup every month. I pay for that. My personal, y'all, pains me to say this. Not really, this is first world problems. So again, budgeting. This is putting yourself on a limit. And I, I would suggest putting some kind of like fun money in there. So I get $100 every month to spend on whatever I wanna spend it on. And I roll it over. So sometimes I'll save it if I want like something bigger. Um, I get $50 a month to spend on Glory because I like to spend money on her. We do a certain amount of money that we spend every month on family dates or even just me and Brett doing dates, either one. We have a $50 a month is like our budget. We call it extra or emergency. It's like if a birthday comes up unexpectedly that we're invited to, like you're obviously gonna bring a present. That money would come out of that fund. And okay, we have the Disney Channel. We probably need to cut that out because my kid now has a tablet. We don't need the Disney Channel. So those are all things that you could cut out if you needed to. So I hope that all makes sense, guys. It is very, very simple to make a budget. I told um, someone this morning, making a budget isn't hard. Sticking to the budget is hard. Drop me a two if you feel me, okay? Making a budget and writing it down and making the plan, it's just like a schedule. Making a schedule is not hard. Making yourself stick to the dang schedule is what's hard. So step one, get a paper, wants and needs. Step two, write down what you actually spend every month. So your actual spending. Step three, figure out where do you want to be at the end of the year? You trying to pay off a certain amount of debt or have a certain amount in the savings account? And then step four is add this up. Make sure your numbers on the back match what you added up. And again, if that doesn't make sense, rewatch the video. Um, and then you got to either ask yourself if they match. Awesome. Most of us, they don't match when you first do this. So you got to ask yourself, okay, am I going to trim the fat? Am I going to take some things out of my budget? Am I going to make some more money? Because again, that's we live in 2021, guys. Anyone can make more money anytime they want to. My daughter just came out of the bedroom. Or am I just going to adjust my end of the year income or end of the year goal? Because you can do that. This is your budget, y'all. There's not a right or a wrong. This is you setting up a budget for your family. And I'm going to show you, I would highly recommend tracking. Well, no, not recommend. You have to track. If you don't track, how do you know how much you're spending? So there's two ways to track. My friend Amanda, her and her husband do the Dave Ramsey program. They are like real good with their money. They do the cash envelope system. So for example, if I know I have $100 to spend that month, I take the $100 out of the bank, put it in a cash envelope, and I carry it around with me. Y'all, my dumb butt would be losing that envelope. <laughs> I'm not doing that. She's real good at it. Like I, every time we go out, she opens up her little, her cute little folder, her little, not in a folder, what the heck are they called? The little things you keep your money in. Y'all, I use a dang debit card. Clearly, I don't use one of these. My daughter's like, it's a debit card holder. Yeah, because that's what we use. Um, a billfold, is that the word? I don't know, the wallet. So she has it. She has her like all divided in her little categories. I'm like, girl, my OCD, no. But she, she real good at it. This is what I do. I'm just going to not even lie to y'all. I have my budget. I have written down what I'm going to, what I can spend this month. And then every time I spend, I just write minus such and such. I have this much left. Spend again, minus such and such. I have this much left. That's how I track. So literally it's just in my journal budget. I'm minusing Like I have it written down how much I can spend and what it's for. And I just track it that way. Some of y'all, you want to do the cash system. Again, not a right or wrong. You do what you want to do and what works for you. And you may do the cash system and hate it and switch over to this later. You may try both of these and hate them and find an app that tracks it for you. Cause I know those are out there. So not a right or wrong. You just find what works for you. So I hope this helped. Like I said, I'm a teacher. <laughs> this is just what I do. So have an awesome rest of your day, guys. Oh, if you want to share this, duh, you can. We're doing another Amazon gift card drawing for February. 
So January is done. I'm gonna get all the people that shared my videos, put them in a drawing. We'll be announcing that sometime this week who the winner was. So February, brand new contest. Any video of mine that you share during February, you go into a drawing for an Amazon gift card and we will do that drawing in the beginning of March. So, bye.